Another option we have for improving the overall exposure and contrast in our photograph and a method which has a bit more control than the levels command or the levels adjustment layer, but which is also a little bit more intuitive than the curves adjustment layer is the shadows highlights adjustment. And we don't actually have an adjustment layer for this particular feature, but we can use it non-destructively by creating a secondary layer to apply the changes to and by making that layer a smart object. So I've got our shadows highlights layer created already. We'll go to the layer menu and I'll choose smart objects, convert to smart object. From here we can see that the smart object icon has been added to the layer. So now we can go ahead and go up to the image menu and choose image adjustments shadows highlights. From here you'll be greeted with a dialog box that has two controls by default has the shadows amount and the highlights amount. But that's not where the real power of this adjustment comes from. We need to click the show more options to get the full idea of what this can do for us. If we start with the shadows uh, tonal width and I drag to the right, you can see that boosting this value increases the number of tonal values in the image that get brightened by the amount of 35%. So if I take this way down, the tones that are being brightened are still having an amount of 35% applied. It's just far fewer of the tones are getting that change. So what we need to do is find a sweet spot. And we want to make sure that the brighter tones on the trees in this case, and uh, also certain parts of the sky, are not being uh, brightened up because that's sort of the opposite effect of what we want. We want probably less than the darkest half of tones just to have a modest uh, brightness adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that around 34, 35%. Now we can use the amount slider to determine how intense that effect is. So let me zoom in a little bit here so we can see it a little bit easier. And just keep your eye uh, on the trees here. So if I boost the amount up, you can see what's being modified are the shadows directly underneath the trees. And if I zoomed out a little bit, you would see a few other areas as well. So from here, it's pretty easy to decide how much detail we need to see under those trees. So I'll settle at a value right around 20 or 25 percent. The radius allows us to control the contrast in that local area. So it's basically going to take a look at those edges and, you know, it's really going to make them pop or it's going to try to smooth them out a little bit. So this is somewhat a subjective uh, option. I'm going to leave this value right around 33 pixels. So let's do the same thing now with highlights. I'll go ahead and pan up a little bit so we can still see the tops of the trees, but also uh, some of the clouds and some of the sky. So from here, I'll uh, boost the amount. And you can see very clearly what this does is just the opposite. It takes those brighter tones and it darkens them down. And again, we have this tonal width that is defining what we mean you know, by those highlight tones. So again, we can boost this out or crunch it down. In fact, I might zoom out a little bit again here just so we can see uh, more of the image. Let's, uh, let's settle on a value around 15% and then let's see where we want this tonal width to be. Maybe right around, probably right around 30%. So here again, we can go back to the amount now and decide how much we want to darken those down. So really all I would be doing in this case is probably just trying to add a little bit of detail back into the clouds. I don't, I don't really need to uh, darken down uh, any other portions of the highlights. And then we can use the radius as well to sort of manage the transition uh, between those brighter and darker areas in the sky. So from this point, uh, the final two adjustments are mid-tone adjustments, and one of them acts a lot like the Vibrant Slider in ACR. It does a mild saturation or color intensity correction uh, for the mid-tones. So I already did that in ACR for this shot, and I'm just going to leave a relatively uh, modest value of about plus 15. And then we can also play with the mid-tone contrast to get the final uh, look of the image that we want. So I'll move this back and forth, and I think a value right around 20 should be pretty good. So I'll zoom back out now, and if I turn the preview on and off, you can see we've gone from a very 
flat looking image where there's not a lot of uh, relief between different areas of detail and not a lot of contrast to something that really pops and really stands out uh, in terms of the contrast and details in the image. So from here, we can click OK to apply the changes and those will be added to our smart object layer. And we can see now we have a shadows highlight setting uh, directly beneath that. And we can even limit that further by applying a layer mask as we've done at earlier points in the training. So if we save this document and we want to come back and change the settings, we can just open the document, double click on that shadows and highlights option, and then change whatever settings we want, click OK, and those new changes will be applied to our smart object layer.